This is the Feast for Hard Anodized Aluminum Cooking Set from Fire Maple. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this, keep watching. All right, quickly, just before we begin, I want to thank Fire Maple for sending me out the Feast for Camp Cook Set so that I could share it with you. So, my experience with this was two weeks of camping in Kushbequak National Park. We substituted all the regular pots and pans that we used when we go car camping, and we put this in, along with with another fry pan which I'll be talking about in another video only because it was larger than the one that I'm about to show you. So I've got a good amount of experience on this set that I want to share with you. What I'll do is I'll just take it down to the tabletop, I'll go through each of the items inside of this kit and uh, then we'll wrap the video up. Alright so here is the fully stacked set or the Fire Maple Feast 4. And I think they call it the Feast 4 because it's intended for about a four person setup. It worked well for June and I, two weeks car camping. Uh, I don't know that I would necessarily say it's big enough for four people. I guess it could be. It's just a matter of making the best use of what you have here. So other than this set, the only thing I have to show you is this, which is the mesh stuff sack that it all came in, very much like most of the Fire Maple products. So let me just share with you each of the items in this set, and I'll talk about my experience and use them. So to start with, on the bot is this fry pan. Look at that. How different is that? I don't think I've ever seen another fry pan with ridges on the bottom like that. It has a folding handle on the bottom. You just fold it up, locks out like that, press the button. Very, oh yeah, very positive uh, locking on it. I'm going to talk more about this in a minute because it's not quite the way I expected it to operate. So let me just put that aside. Oh, by the way, this, the, the pan itself is uh, measures uh, 7.6 inches by 1.7 inches deep. It's rated at holding 0.9 of a liter or 30.4 fluid ounces. You know, it's not that you're going to be putting any liquids in this, but I guess it's good to know that it's it's a good size deep pan. But I'll again, I'll go back to my experiences of that in a moment. Next is the large pot. Now, the large pot is a full two liter pot uh, or 67.5 fluid ounces. It measures 7.4 inches across and 4.6 inches in uh, height here. And by the way, I will put the metric measurements in the video description. I'm just trying to save a few moments of time and repeating all of that. It also has the same fold over handle, works in reverse, locks in very positively, a little push button here to release it. Great handle. It has a stand-up D-ring on top. Works well enough. It's got that little, how should I say, you slide it a little bit to the side to make it stand up, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's pretty easy to knock it and it falls down again. However, it's not that hard if you have a fork or a spoon or something to get it back up into, into place. It does have drain holes or steam holes here. They work well as drain holes, uh, because there's only, what, five of them there? They're a little bit slow, but it still didn't work out too bad. I like the fact that it's kind of depressed here. Not that I'm going to use this for putting hot coals on or doing any baking, but it still means that it's very unlikely that you're going to spill with this accidentally. So that's the lid. Now, the rest of them are inside. Let me just take the rest out, finish showing you the, you the larger pot. Yeah, so there you go. There is the larger pot. And yes, you can see a little bit of staining in the bottom from two weeks of hard use. And there are measurements down the side here, little notches to help you measure for your meals if you have to have a precise amount of water. So that's the large pot. Put that out of the way. Then comes the smaller, or the medium pot is the way they refer to it. It's only two pots. There is more items inside of this, though. This is a full 1.5 liter pot, 50.6 fluid ounces, and it is 6.6 .6 inches in diameter and 3.8 inches in height. has the same type of a folding handle, same type of D-ring, same number of drain holes, so just a smaller pot. Do you know, it occurred to me that if you were going camping by yourself as opposed to two or three or four of you camping and car camping, you could probably get by with just this pot and maybe the fry pan if you felt you needed one. Uh, so it's nice to have the larger set 
to, if there's more of you, but, oh yeah, I should probably mention this right now. This is the Feast 4, but Fire Maple does include, or does have for sale, smaller sets with fewer components in it as well that you can purchase if you don't want or need the whole big set. All right, lid off. And there's a few more items. It's kind of like a, those uh, stacking dolls. All right, take that pen aside. Okay, they did include two little bowls and a little ladle or flipper, what you might want to call it. And these are considered for serving rice. And uh, you know, they're not bad. It's just that I don't, I didn't see a whole lot of use for them. At least when I first got it and I took it out and said, what am I going to do with those? Maybe I'll just leave them home. But what I found is in assembling meals, not so much for eating notice, but it's nice to have two little tiny bowls that you can put things in, whatever it is, maybe the ingredients that you add in at different times. These little bowls do come in handy. And I was surprised how well this little lifter slash, I don't know what you'd call it, stirrer is uh, for use. And I'll, I'll explain when I, one of the spots I did use that quite conveniently. All right, put those aside. Last thing, little kettle. It's a nice little kettle. It really is. Now, it's nice in the sense that I'd like kettles that have wide bases on them because that maximizes the fuel use of any stove that you have. And, you know, nice little pour spout. Here's the thing. It's only 0.8 of a liter. So that's just over three cups of water, 27 fluid ounces. Uh, not a great volume, but if it's just you, if you're just making coffee for yourself or tea for yourself or two people, you, there's enough water here. It's just not a large kettle. Somebody might want, actually want a larger kettle. This is known as the T3 kettle. The dimensions on this are uh, six inches in diameter and 2.8 inches in height. And uh, yeah, nice little kettle, same type of a thing, folding handle, very well constructed, same stand-up D-ring. This one just gets to be a little harder to get stood up. But once again, if you were taking this and using it over a gas stove, a little pointed stick or a fork or something wouldn't make it too difficult to lift up. And uh, yeah, okay, so that's all of the components. I don't think I've mentioned this yet. All together, this whole assembly comes with the stuff sack, not that it adds a lot of weight, is 2.2 pounds or 1.14, actually that's not correct, 1,100 or 1,014 grams. So just over a kilogram. So just over a kilogram for everything. And of course, if you want it, you can start to uh, take just components of it if that's all you're looking for. Now, I just want to come back to the fry pan because this is the thing that was the most different. It is all hard anodized aluminum. This is not some, some type of a Teflon coating on it. It's hard anodized aluminum. So, so for people that are concerned about cooking in aluminum, uh, the hard anodization prevents you from scraping any aluminum off with any type of a sharp or, or hard implement. You're not going to have that concern at all. Interestingly, it's done with a smooth finish, so it still does act as some type of a non-stick surface. Now, having said that, it is not a non-stick surface. And, you know, it's interesting. I looked at this and wondered, could I season this like you might the, uh, the uh, firebox of, uh, and what are the quick sets, the, the hard anodized aluminum? Yes, you can, but you know, I didn't find it necessary. I suppose I still could if I wanted to. And here's the reason why. So obviously when I first looked at this fry pan, I said, oh, I, I, I cannot imagine doing some things in this, like eggs, like I can do, oh, that, they're just gonna stick to the bottom, right? Might be nice for steaks, for grill marks and the like, but uh, here's my experience. Number one, and, oh, and Gina wanted to th me to throw this in. It makes great, toast. So you can just drop a piece of bread into this, buttered or not buttered, and that will leave grill lines like toast will without burning the whole bottom. Now, of course, it's still all about heat control and what kind of a heat source you're using it on, but it works really well. Things like steak or pork chops or anything else, it works really well. It leaves knives and little grill marks. And here's the thing. I wondered about two types of eggs, scrambled eggs and omelets. And I said, well, you know, I, I, for the review, at least, I have to at least try. And if it fails, then I'll say it fails. It didn't fail. It worked really well. Gina likes to have her eggs scrambled. And so she did. So she did scrambled eggs. And here's where the little flipper came in. 
it actually works really well for getting things out of this little pan. So uh, despite the, its appearances, you can actually cook eggs in it really well. Oh, what about an omelette? The omelette worked really, really well. Again, surprisingly. Now, yes, I did put a little butter or olive oil or a combination of the, um, both of them in there just to help it to keep from sticking. And I was able to make an omelette that I could then flip and fold in on itself with cheese and whatever other ingredients you wanted to put in the center and slide it out of this pan very successfully. Uh, there is a little bit of staining in the bottom as you can see, but that's as much from being over a heat source as anything else. It's not food left behind, it's perfectly smooth on the inside. So overall, I was really, really impressed with this set. The quality is definitely there. And you know what? This is actually going to go into our car camping gear that and replace the other things that we have been using for a couple of reasons. The compact size, the folding handles, and the relatively light weight. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, just a couple of comments as we wrap this up. First off, I, I just want to make it clear. I did not use this over an open fire, either in a wood stove or any other type of fire. No reason why you couldn't do that, but that's not the way we cook when we go car camping. Also, I did not use it over one of those little tiny butane stoves. We used it over a Coleman stove, and that's a propane Coleman stove, not a, one of the pump pressurized, not kerosene, white gas stoves. Yeah, just a, a propane stove, Coleman stove, and uh, it worked great. I liked that it had provided good heat distribution. Now, a bit of a caveat, took a little bit of experience. What we were using before using this set was a little heavier in nature. So you could count on it being a little slower to heat up and the heat distribution may have been a little bit better. So with something like this, this thin and is hard anodized, very tough material, um, it still heats up very quickly, and if you're not careful, you could burn things in it. We didn't burn anything, and it may be because I started out by using as low a flame as I could get away with to heat the surface up. I could always heat, you know, turn the flame up a little bit. Now, yes, if you're just boiling water for cooking potatoes or rice or anything else, then that's not much of an issue. You want the flame to be high, at least initially, to get your water up to temperature. But if you're cooking up uh, other meals that involve cream or gravies or anything like that, you don't want them burning. So heat management is important with this. So I just put that out there so that people realize that it's still a lightweight set. And being a lightweight set, you have to be uh, careful or at least choose carefully what you're going to put it over for a heat source, how intense that is, and of course, like anything else, keep an eye on it to make sure you're not burning anything. Overall, I'm very impressed. It's not something I thought I would actually like, and the only application I have for it is car camping, although I could break it down, especially this little kettle. I do like this little kettle. That'll go well over any small stove. Okay, that's all I have to say about it. What I will do, of course, is put all the specifications for each of the components, their weights, and all the, the combined weights and everything, as well as the link to Fire Maple, where you can take another look at this if you're interested. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore, and take that path less traveled, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.